Hello Stormwater Designers, welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions instructional videos. It's another hydrology education video today. We're in part 10 of our series and we're going to be going over stream flow in this video. So if you want to learn more about the basics of hydrology, from rain gauges to measuring precipitation, understanding flow and the hydrologic cycle, you should check out that video series. But anyways, let's get into this video. You can download our hydrology terms guide, which is a nice five, six page guide that gives you a bunch of definitions of basic and some advanced hydrology and hydrologic terms that you may need to help understand what's going on in the industry uh, or other aspects of hydrology. It's 100% free. Just go to the description down below to download that guide. Anyways, let's get into the topics. We're talking about stream flow measurement today. And in the stream flow phase of the hydrologic cycle, the water from a given catchment is usually concentrated in a single channel. So remember, when we have rainfall, or rain, rainfall, rain on a certain site, and then it runs off, most typically it's going to go into some sort of catchment or uh, facility that's going to be able to catch that water, that additional runoff in stormwater. It's going to go into uh, the city water system, a storm sewer drain, and then finally get concentrated to one single channel. And it is possible to measure the entire quantity of this water in this phase if it has left the area. So if it has left that catchment and is now going into a single stream or area, we can now measure that quanti quantity of water. And a continuous record of stream flow requires the establishment of a re relation between flow rate and water level in a channel. And this is very common. We want to know what is the flow rate of this water in cubic feet per second or whatever measurement that we're using. And then what is the water level in this channel? And this can tell us a lot about uh, the stream flow record and how to then design downstream mitigation facilities or keep track of this data for other uses. So if you have a stream that was carrying water and we are able to use measuring tools to measure the level and we can obtain that flow rate, that's gonna be really useful for further analysis. And so this can be accomplished in a small stream using just a weir and the measurements of head, so the water head can then be converted into flow rate. So the weir can give us measurements of that water head. We can convert that into flow rate. And in large streams, the use of laboratory rated flow measuring devices will not work. So in very, very large streams, it's just not going to be enough to be able to figure out what that stage is. And so then current meters uh, must be used to measure the discharge in that stream. And discharge against the stage of the time of measurement will be plotted for the stage discharge curves and then later converted into rating curves. And so a rating curve is a plotting measure discharge versus stage. It's um, a lot of the time using logarithmic formulas for the rating curve, but the basics is that measures discharge versus the stage. And the rating curve is dependent on the geometry of the stream. So based on how the stream is set up, you're going to get a different rating curve. And erosion and deposition of sediment in the stream may change that rating curve. So if we have additional uh, erosion in the stream and some deposited solids in the stream, it's going to be changing how that flow flows and maybe changing the stage of the water. And so that will uh, change the rating curve as well. And so a satisfactory stream flow record can only be obtained through consistent current meter measurements to fix the position uh, to fix the position of a rating curve. So to get that stream flow record, we need to keep a current meter in one fixed position for a long period of time to get enough stage and discharge data based on different storm events. And so here's a sample rating curve here. So this would be a lake outlet stream rating curve. We have Q in cubic meters per second. This one is in metric units. And then stage on the x-axis here, going from 0.05 meters to 0.15 meters. And then the flow going from zero all the way up to 0.35 cubic meters per second. And you can see it's graphed here and we can derive equations from this um, graph data here. And that's probably from that current meter that was placed in the stream for analysis. And so a stream flow rating curve plot, the graph shows a simple stage discharge relationship typical of most stream flow measurement stations that we talked about. And so backwater effects may actually affect this rating curve. So if we have backwater heading back into the stream from other storm events or circumstances, that will affect this rating curve because that will directly affect the discharge uh, probably in a negative way and, and the stage will probably actually maybe be higher because of those backwater effects. It's just going to depend. If the channel slope is flat, variations in water surface slope may also affect that rating curve. And then a slope record is also required near the rating station to monitor that channel slope so we can, affect, so we can determine the effects to the rating curve. We're actually going to do a stream flow rating curve plot example here. 
we're going to go to an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so here's my Excel spreadsheet. I have stage and feet versus ditch charge in cubic feet per second. And so if we want to plot this here, I'm going to highlight all these uh, data values here. And remember from our PowerPoint right here, we want stage in meters on the x-axis and the flow on the y-axis here. So if we go to insert, and I'm going to put this in here. So we do have the curve set up correctly. We have flow here on the y-axis and stage here on the right. So this is our discharge in CFS. And so this would be an example of our self-plotted rating curve. What I might do here is get rid of some of these data values here. So I might make the minimum bound for, there we go. That looks like more like a typical rating curve here. And we have, well, the, the name would be just be rating curve. We have the discharge here. We have the stage here. We can now see this rating curve. And what's commonly done to create a rating curve that we more uh, analyze the data is make this a logarithmic scale on a base of 10 for both axes here. And so we can better graph and maybe understand that relationship and even uh, employ an equation to better help understand what this rating curve is used for. We'll go over more of that rating curve what we can derive from it in this next video. But we just want to give you an example of how to graph one and what their purpose is for, especially when it comes to stream flow measurement. So the graph shows a simple, um, so that is an example of a stream flow rating curve plot. We're gonna go more in depth onto that in the next videos, but make sure to like and subscribe to this video and we'll see you guys next time.